This next global event could truly shape the outcome of each of these teams' season, because this region from top to bottom is the most competitive in my opinion. Each point's game for the next events matters so much here. For NRG, it will mean making this super team paid off a lot sooner than Leviathan's, as well as justify the likes of Demon1 and Ethan. Qualifying will tell us that these two can get it done without the likes of Busio, Jagama, and Potter. It wasn't just EG system that made them winners, but their skills and results can be transferred to other orgs. And against easier competition than the other three teams remaining, they've looked solid. But the spike in such a precarious spot, there's no chance. What a shot! Nails him straight to the wall. Lombok down, has to know he's dead! Bruder Box! You're joking! But that is precise. Yeah, look at this. Oh! <laughs> Take with paranoia, two flashes, need, recon, everything. Bloody hell, what the hell is going on there? Liati still with the two, Ethan. We're making mincemeat of all of them, MW. It will also be important for Marv so he can show people that he can still provide huge value to a winning team despite some of his slumps last year. Failing to make it to Madrid will be used as evidence that chemistry is more important than assembling a team of individually cracked players. It will also make Optic's original core just that more special. We've seen iterations of them with and without finesse, and both will fail to reach those impressive heights they were able to get to in 2022. It's even scarier once you realize that this could cause a domino fall where they might not make it to Shanghai either. We could be living in a reality where the best three America's teams were in Group B all along. Their next opponent is Sentinels, who have been more impressive throughout kickoffs but mainly because they have faced stronger teams. NRG has an advantage since they've only played 4 maps while Sentinels have played 13. Chet is known for being able to counter strat teams and many are speculating that they've been hiding strategies against weaker teams in Group A. This matchup against Sentinels will prove if they're legit or frauds. While on the other hand, Loud has already proved they're still pretty good. Getting to Madrid will show the world that they're still a global threat and possibly one of the few teams that could take down Fnatic, like how they did twice in Champs 2023. Only Kawazin and Sadak remain from this team's original core, formed way back when they went by Picada A and Megos. They will be one of the few players and teams to go through a couple of meta changes and still remain dominant, with the help of Tuez and Les, of course. I think making it to Madrid will also help QC Case too, since he's a new addition. His first couple of games outside of Ascent have been shaky, but at the same time, he went against a very strong Sentinels defense on Split, as well as Aspas, who really wanted to prove that Loud made a mistake in not trying harder to keep him. Overall, it would be nice to see Loud at the global stage again, especially with that crazy Ascent comp. This is a problem to solve. It's the same Utah combo, that is deadly. God, the grenades, the, the molly. So you can't swing heaven. Aftershock for hell, so you can't play hell. They've got, uh, they've got so oh, much yeah. utility coming through. Molly um, behind her too, I mean, it's just a guaranteed kill. Where do you anchor against this comp? The default composition on Ascent, when they won champions, AXX. And it sounds super simple, but if you're amazing at them, <laughs> It's pretty difficult to stop. Juicy K hunting. I really want to see how it holds up against other top teams in different regions. It could really shake things up on that map if teams choose not to ban it. Failing to make it to Madrid would suck for a number of reasons. The first is that it all but means South America most likely will not have any teams to represent them. It will also hurt their future chances too since getting those points are very important. I could definitely see them qualify for champs if they fail to make it to Madrid, but Shanghai would just be that much harder to qualify for especially since their best map so far in Ascent is next up on the list of places to get rotated out in competitive play. It's safe to say they are seen as favorites in their match against the former world champions, Evil Geniuses. Just like NRG, EG has an advantage where they played less maps than Loud. Potter can cook up a counter strategy just like how she did against G2. However, tactics can only go so far. Like Mike Tyson says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And Loud's Util Heavy Ascent Comp is the definition of getting jabbed in the face repeatedly. However, Evil Geniuses being able to punch their way to Madrid would be insane. It would show other America orgs that there are other ways of making a good team outside of just buying the best players. We will also get an instant underdog story heading into Spain. This team is filled with players who were once seen as great 
but for one reason or another are currently slept on to a point where they may have not even been competing in tier 1 if evil geniuses kept their original core. Getting to Madrid will show that Potter is a solid coach, and yes, the haters will complain about the huge advantage that they got, but other teams did as well, and a good coach would use those advantage nonetheless. We already seen some other teams kind of fall short because of coaching decisions in this region. So just having those advantages doesn't mean that any other team would have qualified too. Getting to the next Masters events would be great for the likes of Derek too, and show that 100 Thieves may have been the problem all along. Another timing through mid! And this is a huge gap that EG has been abusing. I mean, they've been making this area of the map no way. on the net. They just don't have the guns to respond. <laughs> Does not seem to be interested in any of it. Paranoia. What a flash! It's gonna hit both. He's gonna find it both. He gets the first. He has to switch weapons. Right click, not connecting. Buying some time. Nothing but three bullet tries to grab the weapon, and it's just out of reach. Derek with a massive round. Of course, seeing Jogamo at the global stage will give him the opportunity to show the world that he may be the best raise in VCT. Doesn't sound like the rocket found any value, but Jogamo continues to push. Oh Two God. fall. Fallon on the swing out! What a response from EG! A slow start. Maybe then he will get more respect. Moreover, it would be crazy if him and Potter are the only 2023 champs to make it to Madrid. The grass isn't always greener on the other side would be a phrase that would echo in the former EG members' heads. They are not seen as favorites though. Failing to make it to Spain wouldn't be the worst thing ever for this team since there's less outside pressure for them to. Basically, a lot of people do not expect much from them. However, this might be their best chance to make it to an international stage this year. They earned the same advantage that EDG, Paper X, and Fnatic did for having the best accolades in their region last year. An advantage that they won't get for qualification stages of Shanghai and Champs 2024. Making it to Madrid and possibly getting some points in the process could be the difference from continuing another Cinderella run or ending their season early. They're going against a Red Hot Loud team that made quick work of America's group of death. If EG wants to move on, they have to ban Ascent in my opinion. Loud has just too much utility and momentum on that map. Even then, it would not be an easy task to make it to the final two. Which is something Sentinels can relate to. They without a doubt have had the hardest road among all teams, and not just in the Americas, but in all of VCT. If they can book a flight to Madrid, then that would officially mean that they're back. And with authority too. From top to bottom, this team has been looking great. Tens on Omen has been a fantastic choice. Open the jump spot, we'll see it. Stun doesn't force anything out. Yeah, here's the Satchels now. He is in danger, not quite. He is the danger, apparently. Here's to meet them. Satchel across. What a shot by Cryo. Showstopper, though. Tens is TP'd right behind him. To Tens now. Tight to the corner. That is ridiculous. The adjustment necessary now from him in second playing the Gever. He's brought it now just to two years. They're not going to be aware. He just taps it, but they can see it. Not sticking it. It's no secret that Sentinels are the most clouded Valorant team in this region, so seeing them and Valorant's current most popular player in Madrid is just a win for most people. I'm personally rooting for their bounce back because of this and because of their A1 social media team. If they fail to make it to Madrid, then it would be devastating to the players and the fans. You can tell they've been putting in so much work in the offseason, which I'm sure other top teams have been doing, but to go from 7th in the Americas regular season to possibly a top 2 team in VCT's hardest region just speaks volumes to the effort that they put in. So much can ride from them getting points to qualify for Shanghai and Champs 2024 as well. There are only so many spots that can go out, and you can make a realistic case for each of the 11 teams in the Americas to claim them. Their next matchup is against NRG, who on paper are seen as a top team in the world. Like I mentioned earlier, Sentinels have played 13 maps while NRG has just shown four. They will need to play out of their minds to overcome this drawback. We have yet to see NRG bust out Rays, and there could be a reason for that. Watch this. Bro. Yeah, here we go. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never lock in Rays. <laughs> Demon One probably won't be playing her for good reason. He will still be a dangerous factor on any agent, but I'd rather take my chances with another person from their team playing duelist rather than their best player. So a map where Raze is a must might be the play here. They will also need to ban Breeze or let Tens go to work with Yoru on that map as well. The stats and eye tests have already told us that the combo of Tens on KO and Zek and Opping on Jet is not a winning recipe. But let me know down below who you are rooting for, have winning, and why. Till then, I'll see you in the next video.